Today's lesson is on M.C. Escher. And I have some fourth grade kids here who are going to learn how to make tessellations along with us. Um, and one of the men, a man who is famous for making tessellations is M.C. Escher. And this is one of his paintings or, or drawings right here. Um, that was done in 1937. And we're going to be making interlocking tessellations. So if we look up here in his painting at these uh, flying geese, you can see how the geese form is the exact identical to the negative space here. And it's interlocking. And it's actually just flipped to the other side here. So it's, it's this. Here you see the head, the beak. And that's the same shape as this, head, beak, wings. And when he added, he did these kind of cool mathematical interlocking designs. Um, he did them in woodcut. He did drawings of them. He, he depicted a lot of mathematical form, formulas in his paintings and drawings. And that's what he became famous for. You can even see some of this as repeated shapes down at the bottom. And then it kind of, kind of morphs or changes into the countryside, the, the fields and pastures. Here's another M.C. Escher right here painting. If you look closely, you'll see the interlocking uh, birds here. If you look up on the internet, you can find all kinds, if you search M.C. Escher, you can find all kinds of art that he has done to inspire you. Um, here's one, a simplified version right here. So you can see the interlocking fish that I have done. And then here's an interlocking design here that students have done. And this is going to be a simple design that we're going to do today. To start off, what we'll need is we're going to be using an index card. And so we take our index card and we want to work, in order to make this tessellation, we want to work on a, with a square, a complete perfect square. So if I want to take a, make a square out of this rectangle really easily, I just simply fold the edge to this edge. And when you fold these, try and be precise. And then just simply take the scissors and slice off the leftover. And this piece you don't need. And this is our tessellation. Now, when I work with tessellations with students, I say, always be very careful of your corners. This is where it's easy to mess up. So on the corner, I diagonally just draw a line in. And the first part of this interlocking design that we're going to make is we need to make a shape that comes along this side here. And so I'm going to take my corner and be precise, go right exactly to the corner and come in. This will be important because we're learning. And as students, when this is our first tessellation, you want to make sure these edges are lined up perfect. So we take our square, we trace in the, the diagonal lines here, and now I'm just going to simply make a freeform line. It can be any line or shape. Just don't make it too difficult, too advanced, or too complicated. Keep it simple in the beginning. And then you can adjust your tessellation after you learn the process. And that's what I did with my fish. First I made something simple, and then I was able to elaborate on it. So just a simple line that's going to connect the two. Now, don't do it straight because you won't have an interesting tessellation. But just kind of make it a, a little area that maybe sticks out and then maybe something that comes in another bump okay something like this now once we've done this then I simply take and I cut this shape out and I'm just cutting it on my line and it doesn't have to be exact and then this is where it has to be exact though cut to the corner perfect right here now you put your puzzle back together Okay, and then you're just going to take a piece of tape, and I'm going to do it pretty small at first. And I'm going to take my puzzle, and I simply do a slide. Now watch. It's lined up. I'm taking this, and I'm not turning it around, and I'm going to end up moving it to this side. I just simply take this, I lift up, over, and down. Now I bring it to this side. Now, you're going to have to make sure that the corners are lined up exactly. And this is hard to see over here. I'll put a piece of paper underneath it. Because I have some black marker on my corner here. So you're lining up this and you're taping. This 
So just simply tape together, tape together. So this was a slide. I did this, flipped it over, and did this. Now I'm going to draw one more, one more side. I can choose the bottom or I can choose the top. So I'm going to draw my line. I'm just going to come off of this. Now look, here's my corner. Don't cut into this area. Keep your original corner. That's real important. Make my shape come right to my original corner. So I'm not going past the original corner. Cut out my shape. And remember, it's only the two sides of this. And be very careful as you come to the corners here. Real careful. Put your puzzle back together. And then slide this exactly the way it was. So I'm putting my finger on this. I go down, over, back up, and place it exactly on the top. And this is forming my tessellation shape. Take time to match up the corners absolutely perfect. And then tape. Now if you need to reinforce, if this is lifting up here, add a little bit more tape, just real small piece. You want it to be secure because you're going to use this as your template for tracing. Now I have my tessellation shape. This is what will form my design. You're going to then take a piece of paper, and the bigger the better because these are pretty large templates. This is an index card, and I end up with a pretty large template. You can do smaller cards, but when you're first learning, it's easier to do it small, big like this. Then find, what I do is I just fold my paper and find the center, and I'm just using this as my guideline. I put my square, my original square on the center, and basically trace. So I'm going to trace my template, and you've got to hold this carefully and trace carefully. Oops, you're tracing your exact template. You can trace it with a pencil. I'm just using a black pen. If you use a permanent pen, that's good too, because then you don't have to trace it back over. You can just paint it in. And when you have permanent, the lines aren't going to get smeared. Now, once it's traced, you're going to start your interlocking design. You just simply slide this. So here's my image traced. I keep it exact, and I just slide it. I'll slide it to the left first. So I just simply slide this to the left, and it interlocks. Connect it together. And this is the beginning of our design. Now, this design is just an abstract shape. Sometimes what I ask the students is to, to look at this abstract shape and look to see if you can see anything of interest. Maybe it might look like a snail. Maybe it might look like an octopus. Maybe it might look like, a lot of times it looks like a side view face or a witch. This could be the witch's nose. Watch this. The witch's nose, the witch's lips, the witch's ear, the witch's eyeball. Check out this. There you go. And then you would draw your design again here. But we haven't finished interlocking. You want to finish first. Okay, now we go back to the original. Let me show you for interlocking. So it's easy to take this shape and turn it into something imaginative. And I just did that out of my head. So you take this, and let's do the slide at the top. Slide it up slowly. Now look, some kids don't match it up perfect. It's got to be like a tight puzzle right there. Trace, trace, and then you'll have a cool design. Use up all your page. Finish tracing all the paper. Just carefully. I'm kind of doing it rough and fast. There. And then the last one I've got right here. Fill in the puzzle. Mine looks like it's off a tad which it probably is, but the, you know, if it's off a tad, no big deal. Just kind of match it up with a couple. Now, any of these lines that are off here, I'm not going to 
trace. I'm just going to leave those blank because it already has the line it's sharing here. You see that? If you make a mistake, like I said, you know, no big deal. See, now nobody knows that there's been a mistake once I remove my template. And here's my witch, or whatever, this face with a cool nose. Then I can draw it again over here. Draw the nose, lips, continue the rest. Now that's just the shape I saw. Whatever shape you see in yours, side view eyeball, Whatever shape you see in yours, you can turn into your tessellation. But first get it all drawn. Now if you want to continue, I have negative on the edge here. You can continue it again if you want to, just matching up your pattern. There's my, where's my pattern go? Let's see, it's best to do it slide. Slide, there you go. There's my pattern. So if you lose track, go back to your original and slide it over. And each time, take your time lining it up. Yeah, because this forms the nose. That's if you want to use the full page or if you want to just do four in the center for practice. But that's basically how to make your tessellations. And I'll show you the last one I did over here. This is the fish one right here. And I'll show it to you, the full, full page. Let's see if I can get it. See if I can get it to show full page there. And there's a larger page of the fish tessellation. But they're all interlocking. And have fun making your own tessellation.